Lopez here with uh, Maddie Dunn. She lives out of the, the Los Lobos chapter with a Twisted Barbell gym, and uh, she's a 21-year-old equipped lifter. Man, I'm very, very excited. Maddie, thank you for being here with us. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. How are you? I'm really, really good. I'm really good. So uh, what's been going on in your world? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, I've been working a lot. I've been doing yeah. a lot of schoolwork. Uh, I've been at the gym a lot. We're prepping for the Big Bad Wolf meet coming up uh, on February 4th. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I'm hoping it turns out pretty well. I think we have a few lifters signed up, so it should be pretty good. Are you, uh, are you lifting yourself? Yes, I am. I am. All right. You have yeah. your openers set up. Are you ready? I do. We took them yesterday. So I'm opening up with 300, three on my bench, and then we'll do a That is a SDP. monster bench. What kind of shirt do you wear? Uh, an STP. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 I haven't been in it. I haven't been in it for that long, really. Like, I think it's only been a few months. I did my first meet at North of the Border with it. Yep. Um, and I only got my opener. Like, I missed my first attempt and my second attempt, I dumped it to my face like twice and got it on my third, but it was just like, I couldn't figure it out, but it shouldn't have been an issue. Like I did uh 395 to a one board, like a few weeks before, like it really shouldn't have been an issue. So we tried again in New York and I got, I ended up getting 325. So, yeah. but you know, the nice thing is you're picking like a reasonable, good um, yeah. opener. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, bombs, I want to be safe. Right? I want to be in it. <laughs> yeah, be in it because you otherwise yeah. you lose to like the, yeah. the worst lifter that finishes. You lose to, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's really, really awesome. Um, who's helping you with your shirt? Who's helping you in your gear? Um, I've kind of been messing around. Uh, I've got a few um, crewmates that go to West Side and they know gear a little bit better. Um, I've been to a few places uh, to just try it out. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of been figuring it out as we go. So I've seen a few people to help out with it. I've had my crew help out, out with it. It's just been a lot of testing um, and kind of seeing what we can figure out and what I can do better and what works for me sort of thing. You know what we're going to do in New York here? Um, on March 11th, we're going to be having a uh, little little meet, like maybe 30 lifter, you know, full power meet. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to Bill. We'll put together a seminar uh on sunday the day after the meet if okay. you want to come down we'll come and we'll help you with your shirt lifting because okay if the new york chapter can do anything it is bench and shirt i've, right? I've heard that bill is very good yeah when we went up to best. new york they were talking yeah. about it the whole time and they were like yeah bill says you could do so much more with your shirt like i think the yeah. only thing we did with my shirt was i normally pull it down like really low yeah. um and then we just do a little bit of triceps and that was all that i did I arch a lot. That helps. But yeah, <laughs> outside of that, that's pretty much all we've done. We messed with it a little bit more since then. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm open to trying whatever. Like, yeah, you got to come down. It's um, every time someone comes down and lifts with us, you know, they get better. They put pounds on right. every single yeah. time. You yeah, know what I mean? Good. Your best bench was at Worlds, yes, right? Yes, yep. That's 325. not bad. 325. No, it wasn't bad. It was my second equipped meet. I right. feel like it, it was like really close together. Like I wasn't even supposed to do that meet. It was supposed to be like I was going up. Now I brought my gear. So I guess I kind of set myself up for that. But um, I went up and it was just supposed to be my boyfriend and Adam um, going and competing. Adam and Mary. Um, and then Adam bullied me. And it, so it was a lot of peer pressure, um, but it worked. It worked. <laughs> you can't out say well. that anymore. Nobody can bully you. And <laughs> yeah, no, he started, he like grabbed the card. And um, he was like, so are you going raw or are you going multiply? And I was like, you choose. And he chose multiply. So that's what, that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I think it's more exciting. I, when I, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I switched, I never went back once. See, yeah. I think I still want to do like a raw meet. Like I, keep, I still want to work on my raw because I think it transfers over really well. Like yep. I think me doing my multiply bench, I definitely think it transfers over to my raw bench and vice versa. So yeah. I'm think I'll still mess with raw, but I think I'll be more multiply. Yeah, I agree. So, um, you know, when I was lifting, uh, on a regular, when I was competing, like actual, very competitive, uh, mm -hmm. due to my nature of my work, I would lift in equipment for three months and I would do three months raw and three oh, months, equipment, oh. three months raw. And, yeah. uh, and it helped a lot. So I'd come off of the ship after doing three months raw and I'd put on a shirt and, you know, like my bounds, I would get so strong so quick. And everyone's like, what's going on? 
but it's right, because yeah. I had that horsepower from lifting raw for months and months and months. Yeah, I no, I haven't, I haven't done it for that long in a row. I feel like going like equipped for that long. I feel like I get so tired of like my body would be tired is what I feel like. But uh, we generally go like two weeks equipped and then one week raw yeah. bench wise. And it seems to be fine. Um, yeah, well, I'm not recommending that style. That's just yeah. the only <laughs> option I had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you really, you started lifting when you were 19. So right. you've only been at it for what, three years? Yeah. And I, I don't mean, it hasn't even been that long. It's coming up. I think it's coming up on two. Like, um, I started lifting with Mike Wolf and he got sick like four or five months after we started. Um, so like we had that little bit of span. I was completely raw then too. So I didn't get any transfer multiply or anything there. Um, but yeah, we trained with Mike and then he was sick. We ended up just kind of doing the gym thing on our own. Um, most of, or some of our members stuck around um, and we just trained with them and we've been figuring stuff out as we've gone. So it's, it's been okay. <laughs> Miss Mike. It's worked out fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. He was uh, just, just so awesome. I'm so glad you brought him up. Just oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't know him for that long, but he, like, he was a great guy. Like we saw, we went and see, like went to go see him in the nursing home. And um, I just, it was just nice talking to him. Like he was, yeah. it was nice to have him around. Man, what a legend. What a legend. Yeah, like, no kidding. You had a, thank God you had the opportunity. To yeah, spend no, some yeah. Time with him, right? He's amazing. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I don't, I, I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am without him. Like when I came up, uh, my boyfriend actually got me into powerlifting and he was training over, they were at CrossFit Crave training with Mike Screw for a little bit. Um, and he was like, man, you were like built for a bench. Like you should come lift. And I was like, I can't, I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I, I can't do that. Like these girls are going to be so strong. I can't do that. Like I have to at least bench a plate first. And the first time I went, I went to do a plate and I like just missed it or something like that. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was a good experience. <laughs> but yeah, that's awesome. I think you're doing really, really great. I mean, those are no numbers that that's not anything to scoff at. 325 is a lot of weight. Thank you. A lot of weight. And with your you. limited amount of time, right? Because you're you're young. You got you're only 21. You got so right. much time left. You have a huge career ahead of you. I mean, like world record yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah don't I'm give excited. Up. I'm yeah. excited to see where it goes and if yeah. I can figure out my stuff more and get stronger and all that. I need to work on my squat. Like <laughs> I need to work on my legs a lot more, but uh they're there, they do enough for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Well. You know, your, your squat, 407 is your best squat, right? Yeah, I did that in briefs only. Like, so I bought my suit for that meet. It was like, I had signed up for the meet, ended up twitching to multiply after I got briefs because I was like, oh, this is fun. I can do this. Like, this makes me feel good. And so then we were like, okay, let's order a suit. I ordered a suit. It didn't come in until like a month and a half before the meet and it was the leviathan ultra pro so it's like lace up so i was like yeah it's not gonna be that bad i got in it and could not figure it out so we ended up going only and wraps for that meet yeah. <laughs> so i'm hoping i can figure it out and get into a little bit more but well, well you have the right resources available to you you know within the club so uh yeah you know i'll reach out to some people for you on your behalf and we'll get some other lifters shoot you some advice learning to squat in a suit is no easy feat that it's doesn't, it's so not a natural different. feeling. It's so different. <laughs> you know, yeah. you need help. You it's to, well, to figure it out on your own is a silly endeavor because so many people have done it and figured it out before you that are in the club that are willing to help. Yeah. But uh, you also have a giant deadlift, right? So like 350 is a good deadlift. It's decent. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. I feel like that. that's my worst lift, if I'm being honest. Like every time somebody says, I'm like, I need to fix my deadlift. Like that is the big well, one. We got to get I that over like. 400, but it's still, it's still a yeah. great deadlift, right? Yeah, it's all right. It's okay. So, <laughs> how often are you deadlifting? Not very often. You just don't neglect your, uh, your accessory work. Right, right? yeah. Like, even yeah. if you're not deadlifting, get all your glute ham raises in, you know, yeah. get your lats, your rows and all that stuff. And yeah. Anyhow, I'm not your coach. <laughs> <laughs> but if you need help let me know and uh we'll get okay. people directed to you okay, so okay. um when you were in high school you did track and field and yeah. a little bowling yeah not i wasn't great by any means in either yeah. of them actually um i did track for all four years i did it in junior high too i was actually homeschooled the first year so i was homeschooled second through eighth grade um or second through seventh grade seventh grade i did track and then i decided i want to go to school and did the rest of 
that. Um, but I was not good. I was not a good runner by any means. Um, <laughs> Brad will argue and say that I was good, but I was not like I got varsity because I got like you had to get like 10 points total for the year or something like that. And we did how many meets? Like it was like, I could get one point here. I could get two points at a meet where there's no varsity team running. Like, so I wasn't great. Um, I did sprints and stuff. Uh, looking back on it, I feel like I should have been a thrower. I think I would have been better there, yeah. but um, yeah, it was good. Uh, training was pushed hard. And I think that helped me in the gym and like transferred that over and kind of got me into the mentality of like I need to go to the gym it makes me feel better sort of thing um so yeah I thoroughly enjoyed doing track and field though my god so you do you do quite a bit of stuff um with dynamic and conjugate and your max effort days and stuff like that right yeah how often are you hitting your max effort uh I do one of each per day or per week so like one upper body one max effort lower body um, and generally Sundays are upper and then lowers are on Fridays. Uh-huh. Um, and then we do our dynamic days generally on Mondays, but not today where I'm going to do it tomorrow right. for lower. And then Wednesdays are upper. Um, but yeah, it's generally like a nine by three on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, yeah. And we crank it out and then we do a lot of heavy accessories, like especially on bench, like they are heavy. <laughs> I end up either having to drop weight down or stopping to finish our sets and stuff like that. But um, yeah, max effort accessories are a little more laid back just because we pushed really hard on our max effort bench generally. Um, And so we back off a little bit on accessories. It's more volume work, I would say. What do you like more? Do you like heavy accessories or light accessories? I enjoy heavy accessories for the most part. I, I fatigue very fast. Like I can do, I'll do my first set heavy and then it ends up like going down so fast. Like I don't have any sort of muscle endurance, like any volume. No, nah, it, I don't last very long. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to. We need to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to do I'm here it. for the one rep. That's all I got. That's right. Do. 30 seconds of work. That's it. That's yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God. What was your favorite competition that you've done so far uh i think it was youngstown at nationals it was my first full power meet um and i did it raw with wraps um but it was it was just so the environment was really good like it was all hyped up our crew like our whole crew came down like youngstown's i think it's a little over three hours from here um and we had like everybody from our crew came down and like it was not many competed like i think it was me and brad um and maybe like a couple bench only like but the whole crew came down it was really hyped up and like people I didn't even know were cheering me on like it was nice like the music was loud it was in like a dirty gym no offense to Hodge but like it's a rougher gym yeah and it's it's fun like it hypes me up and I'm not like a super hyped up lifter like I'm I'm generally really calm under the bench um but other people being hyped up and excited and happy and like that helps me like it transfers over to my bench and it's like it's encouraging to me and I I thoroughly enjoy it It, yeah (laughs) I like the environment a lot that's awesome yeah you know I'm so glad I'm so glad to hear that you know that's something that you know we've all is you know all the chapter presidents everyone that puts together a competition that's what we strive for what's um what kind of equipment you rock what's your squat suit uh leviathan ultra pro yeah and then I have uh predator briefs Okay. and my sdp so i guess i'm all in sir at the moment other than like my wrist wraps and knee wraps those are overkill yeah okay yeah mm-hmm. cool ted kohler uh he's got some uh metal militia wrist wraps and stuff um mm-hmm. and he has them in four different strengths you know? i saw that yeah his belts looked super cool at the meet they had like um speckles on them and stuff I don't yeah know. so you got uh the big bad wolf bench coming yeah. up yeah and yep. uh, yeah. any, so we talked about that. Do you have any, any idea of a meet after that? Or do you plan out or you take a one, one meet at a time? I, uh, since uh, north of the border, it's kind of been like, a, as I go, like I want to feel more confident in my squat and like, I don't want to feel rushed to learn my gear. Like I kind of felt rushed to learn my squat suit then. And I was like, no, I can't do it. I only went in my briefs. So I don't want that to happen again. I want to feel like super confident in my um, suit, like all my gear. Yeah. Um, I was thinking if we go up in September for Worlds, then we'll then I'll do that. 
was the thought. Um, but outside of that, I'm not 100% sure. If I feel better or good before then, maybe I'll do something before then. But um, yeah, I don't really have anything planned at the moment. I highly recommend people compete a lot. You know, you know, I try to yeah. get people to compete every, you know, once a quarter, four times a year. Yeah. Um, you know, some people compete six, seven times a year. I think that's a bit much, unless you're one, of, you're a freak and you don't. Right. Get I feel like, but it makes sense. Like it makes sense because you're already, you just peaked. Like you're already in that phase where you can go again. Like it's, and you're more comfortable on the platform. Like you just did it. So like, it's not that big of a deal to go and do it again. I feel like if I haven't been on the platform for a while and I get up there, I'm like, oh my gosh, like oh. everybody's staring at me, at least the first lift. Like once I get my first squat done, it's like, okay, two and three is not that big of a deal, but it's like that first squat is scary. It's like scary. every time. <laughs> you're like okay i'm in the meat oh thank god <laughs> yeah yeah exactly you're like okay you can chill out like yeah. you've seen all these people now like you're cool like normally you're face towards them so it's like a new crowd and you make eye contact with these random people and it's like oh, okay <laughs> just, i just gotta squat and then i'm good yeah. So, yeah you know uh doing multiple meets in a row um it's a balance it's not just something that you're like three months out, you're like, I'm going to do a bunch of meets in a row. You can prep for it. But mm -hmm. after you get done with your first meet, then you got to sit there and look at it and be like, you know, did I get hurt? If I did get hurt, is it a serious injury? Or is it something that I can work through? You know, uh, how am I feeling? How's my body feeling? You got to have a good conversation with yourself. You got to know yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. not just something you're like, ah, I'll just do it. You know, yeah. it, it's serious. It's serious stuff. But it's yeah. cool to be able to do it and all those advantages you just talked about. You know what right, I mean? Yeah. Where you're like, you're on the platform. It doesn't doesn't get your nerves going. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And the more you're yeah. up there, the better off you are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So what's your short-term goals here? What are we doing? Where are um, we so we wrote down our goals at the gym, actually. So it's like we can hold each other accountable. And so it's like, I guess it's a New Year's resolution, but it's not. It's just it's just a goal for this year. Um, I would like to get a 400 roll off squat. I did 330 at um, the Youngstown meet. So I'm hoping to build that back up and get there. Um, and then I would like to get a 500 equipped squat, which I feel like isn't too much of an ask here. If I can figure out my squat suit, <laughs> then theoretically it's there. Um, yeah, so I want that. that. And then my bench, I would like a 225 roll bench. I have 210 right now. Um, so just add a little bit of 15 pounds there and we'll be good. Um, and then a 400 equipped bench would be great um I think that would be actually really cool um and then my deadlift I'm just hoping to get it up to four I'm thinking 50 pounds or so would be decent I'm not too I never really look at my deadlift too much like <laughs> there's not a lot of focus there and there should be more but it's not a big goal for me got to get tenacious <laughs> yeah, pulling that weight off the floor you got to be mean you got to be angry <laughs> to do that, you know? yeah yeah so, yeah but you'll get it those are all real reasonable you know, like you're right in the pocket. I think you'll exceed it. If anything, I think you're, um, you're selling yourself short. I think you're going to do much better than that this year. You know, just, from, I hope so. Yeah. I yeah. think, I think they'll be fun. They're nice to like reach towards. I'm hoping I get them and then I can set some new ones, um, and figure that out. Yeah. No, oh, that's really cool. Do you have long-term goals? I would like to be top ranked. I'm currently in the 165 class and I mean, my, my bench is decent. Um, but I would like to get my total up there, like at least top three. Laura's is a big one to beat. Um, and I don't know if I'll get there, but I'll say like top three, it's solid. I um, mean, if I could beat Laura's, that would be great. But I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if that's going to happen yet. Um, and then hopefully after I figure that out, or maybe in between, if I get bored, I'll go 181 or 148 um, and try to do something over there. I have records on either side. Classes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not too far. So I think those long-term goals are real good. And I think that you're young enough and you're strong enough. And I think you have the support system around you that mm -hmm. like, those are very attainable goals. I, I can see you becoming a world champion. So, you know, if I believe in it, I think you should believe in it too. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It yeah. just, um, it's, it's not getting injured and it's getting to the gym every single time you're supposed to be in the gym. Right, it's consistency yeah. over time equals success, right? Yeah, and yeah. it's, you know, not setting these goals. You're very, very realistic 
very good goals where you're not setting these goals where you're like, I'm not going to go to another meet until I can bench 500 in a shirt. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, then you end up blowing your, your bicep off your arm. Like yeah. Tri- yeah. You know, yeah. like um, you, you inch your way up and you're patient with yourself and you understand mm-hmm. that it takes time and you, you know, avoid doing dumb things that get you injured. And by the time you're 25, 26, you know, you're th- the champ. Yeah. You know? I'm hoping. <laughs> oh my God. I, I can't thank you enough for just taking time out of your life and, and suiting the shit with me and sharing yeah. what you're doing, your story with the rest of metal militia. Yeah, it's no, really I cool. thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I was surprised that I was asked to do it. So <laughs> well, I'm glad but, that you're doing yeah. it. It's cool. It was a great um, experience. I can't wait to watch you excel and watch your path. And yeah, uh, anytime you want to get back on and chat after you do a competition, hit me up. We'll do this sure. again. We'll talk about your, your, your competition, your training. And if yeah. you need help with your squat, your bench, and your deadlift, hit us up, and we will send you to the right place. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Keep killing it. <laughs> You're doing awesome. I will try. <laughs> yeah, the leaders, the next generation of metal militia, killing it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, we're trying. <laughs> oh my god! All right, everybody, that is Maddie Dunn, and uh, that's all we got for you today. We'll hit you up next time. It's uh, metal militia. It's for life. <laughs> we'll see you later. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good night.